Hi, fifth grade. It's Mrs. Kyoko with your flipped math lesson for today, 3-1. Today's objective is I can use properties of multiplication to multiply more easily. So today we're going to be working on these properties of multiplication. And these are similar to the properties of addition because multiplication and addition are related. So our first problem says, do two groups of five beach balls equal five groups of two beach balls. So you can see up here at the top, I have um, two groups. So here's one group, and here's the second group of five beach balls. So that's essentially saying two times five. And then down on the bottom, I have five groups of two beach balls. And that's essentially 5 times 2. So does 2 times 5 equal 5 times 2? I could write that like this. 2 times 5 equal 5 times 2. Is that true? Yes, it is, because both of them equal 10. So 2 times 5 equals 5 times 2. Now this looks very similar to a property that we've already learned about in addition called the commutative property. So, well, what is the commutative property of multiplication? Well, it's just what we looked at. The commutative property of multiplication is the order of factors can be changed, but the product stays the same. So this is really important. So this is something you should be writing down. I would pause the video to write out what the commutative property of multiplication is. Today, we're going to be learning about four different properties and you'll need to know the difference between all four different properties, be able to identify them, and be able to explain what they mean. In our explanation, we have two words that I've underlined, factors and product. Let's talk about what those words are. A factor is the numbers that are multiplied together. So in this example, 5 times 9 equals 45. The factors are 5 or 9. If I was talking about the number 45 and I was thinking, what are all the factors of 45? That means what are the numbers I could multiply together to get to 45? So I could multiply 1 um, times 45, or I could multiply 3 times 15, or I could multiply 5 times 9. So all of these are factors of the number 45. A product is the answer to a multiplication problem. In my problem 5 times 9 equals 45, the product is 45. So you need to know the difference between what a factor is and what a product is. The factors are the numbers that you multiply together and then a product is the answer to a multiplication problem. These are two vocabulary words that you should be writing down inside of your notebook. Okay, so we have 3 times 7 equals 21. 7 times 3 equals 21. Which property was that again? If you said commutative property, you are correct. Which are the factors? The factors are the 3 and the 7. Which is the product? The product is 21. Let's talk about the associative property of multiplication. With the associative property of multiplication, you can change the grouping of factors and the product will stay the same. Let's look at an example. I have 2 times 5 times 3, or 2 times 5 times 3, and you can see that I've changed the grouping. So here I have 2 times 5, which equals 10, times 3 will equal 30. On this problem, on the problem below, I have 2 times 5 times 3, which equals 15, 
and 2 times 15 equals 30. So I could rewrite this problem to say 2 times 5 grouped together times 3 equals 2 times 5 times 3 grouped together. They're equal. That's the associative property. I can group uh, different numbers together. It doesn't matter. They'll still equal the same answer. So here's an example of the two different properties we've learned about. The one on the top says 24 times 32 equals 32 times 24. Which property is that? If you said the commutative property, you are correct. Below we have 5 times the grouping 40 times 9 equals the grouping 40 t 5 times 40 times 9. Which property is that? If you said it is the associative property, you are correct. Let's learn about another property. This is called the identity property of multiplication. The identity property of multiplication is when you multiply any factor by 1, the product is that factor. I'll read that again. When you multiply any factor by 1, the product is that factor. That sounds complicated. You're going to notice how easy it is, though. So every time I take a factor, like 5, times the number 1, my product is always going to equal the factor. So 5 times 1 equals 5. 25 times 1 equals 25. Whatever that first factor was or the factor that's not 1, it will always equal the answer or the product. 1 times 109 is 109. Whatever factor is not 1 will be the answer. So that one should feel pretty simple. Anytime, anything times 1 is that same number. The zero property of multiplication is when you multiply any factor by 0, the product is 0. Okay, So it's kind of the opposite of the identity property. For example, 17 times 0 will equal 0. 100 times 0 equals 0. And 0 times 29 equals 0. It doesn't matter what number you multiply times 0, your answer is always going to equal 0. It could even be a decimal. So 1 1,000th times 0 will still equal 0. So which property is it? You know, you have four properties to choose from. Commutative property, associative property, identity property, and zero property. You need to figure out which property it is. Number one, write down the problem. 65 times 1 equals 65. And write down which property it is. If you wrote down it is the identity property, you are correct. Number two, 40 times 9 equals 9 times 40. Write down the problem and the property. If you wrote down it is the commutative property, you are correct. Number three. 33 times 0 equals 0. If you wrote down it is the 0 property, you are correct. Number 4, 11 times 9 equals 9 times 11. If you wrote down the commutative property, you are correct. Number five, the grouping 6 times 20 times 5 
equals 6 times the grouping 20 times 5. If you wrote that the associative property, you are correct. And number six, give an example of the commutative, associative, identity, and zero properties. So this time you're making your own example. Don't forget to label which property each of your examples is demonstrating. Here are some examples of each of the properties. So there, your commutative property could be something like 2 times 3 equals 3 times 2. Probably you use different numbers. In fact, you should have different numbers. If I notice on your paper that you have the exact same examples as me, that tells me you didn't do the work. So make sure your examples are different than mine. For the associative property, you should have a grouping times a number or another factor equals that factor times another grouping. So, for example, 3 times 5 is the grouping, times 7 equals 3 times the grouping, 5 times 7. So you'll notice the numbers are in the same order, 3, 5, 7, and then they're in the same order here, 3, 5, and 7. For the identity property, you should have a factor times 1, and that equals the same number. That's the identity property. And then for the zero property, you should have a factor times zero equal zero. We are finished for today. Thanks. Don't forget to make sure to bring your homework tomorrow or the next day you're at school and show me that you have it finished. Bye.